Hi. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a sprite in Unity 3D that can have its uh, texture toggled. So in particular, in this example, I'm going to show how to make a volume toggle. The icon will go from the on uh, rendering image to the off image. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to open up Unity and create a new project. I, I went ahead and created a 2D project. Um, you can choose to do whatever you want. So let's go ahead, in our assets, let's go ahead and create a new folder uh, called Textures. And on my desktop, I've already got uh, our images that we're going to use for our assets. So let's go ahead and drop those into the Textures folder that we just created. The volume on and volume off. Alright, with that said and done, let's go ahead and create a new game object. It's going to be a 2D sprite. And on this, let's go ahead and call this volume. And on this sprite, we're going to go ahead and add a component. It's going to be a script. And it's going to be in C sharp, and it's going to be called volume toggle. You know, volume control. That sounds better. Alright. So we've gone ahead and we've created this script called volume control. Um, using your, your favorite editor, I'm not going to be using the editor that comes with Unity. I prefer um, Atom by GitHub. So let's go ahead and open up the volume control file. And we're going to add the following. In the start, you know what, before the start, we're actually going to do the following. We're going to create some public variables. So we're going to do a public sprite vol volume on and volume off. So that way we can assign our image to both of those. We're also going to create a sprite render. That could be uh, private. All right, let's go ahead and save that and go back into Unity 3D. Let's go ahead and try to refresh it here. Yep. All right. So now we've got our two, uh, we can add two graphics. For the sprite on, we're going to go ahead and say uh, on. And for the sprite off, I'm going to say off. All right, we can go ahead and save that. Oh, it wants us to create a scene. So inside of it, we're gonna we can leave it as untitled. It doesn't really matter. All right. Now going back into our code, we're gonna do the following here. We're gonna say uh, inside the start, we're gonna say sprite renderer equals game object dot get component. Sprite renderer. So that way we initialize the sprite renderer. And then we're going to say set volume. And we don't need to, we're not going to worry about the volume. We're just going to worry about strictly the graphics. Alright, so with our sprite renderer created, let's go ahead and go into the update method. And we're going to say if Oops, the editor's being weird. All right, if is touched, then uh, do something. All right, so the next thing that we want to do is we want to create the is touched method that we just that we just defined here. And for this, for the sake of this tutorial, we are going to create it. Uh, we're going to have it handle it for both mobile and desktop because it's two different ways to do it. Um, it there's two different there's different methods for both mobile and desktop, and we're going to accommodate that. So we're going to say public bool is touched, and we're going to say bool result equals false. We're going to say the first thing that we want to do is we're going to worry about the touch events, and then we're going to worry about the click events. So if input dot 
touch count is equal to 1, so it's been touched. And then we're going to say if the input dot touches, we're going to say that if it equals the end phase, so we're, we're ending the touch, I'm going to type in vector 3, the world uh, point. We're going to get the world point on where, where we touched it. Because we want to make sure that we're actually touching on the sprite and not just some random part of the screen. And I'm going to say vector 2. And I'm going to say if collider 2D equals physics 2D dot overlap point touch position, which is what we just created. Result equals true. All right. So now that we've finished our um, touch, we're going to worry about clicks. So if Input dot get mouse button up is true. And we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna get the world point. So let's go ahead and copy paste this to save us from typing. Alright, uh, Instead of this, we're going to say input mouse position. Oops. And we are going to say mouse position. And if the collider is the physics 2D overlap point, mouse position, then we're going to say the result is true. So in both of these scenarios, no, we have to return it as well. So return result. So in both of these scenarios, if we are actually touching the sprite, then return true. Otherwise, we're not touching the sprite. We don't. We don't need. We don't care about it. All right. So going back into our is touched met, um, condition inside of our update, we're going to do the following because now we're going to get into the point of actually changing the graphic. So we've determined if it was touched, and then we're going to say set volume, because in this scenario we're, we're going to be messing with volume controls. You can, uh, of course, uh, do whatever you want. So we're going to say player press dot get int Volume 50, not equal to 50. Now we're going to plug in true. Otherwise, we're going to plug in false. So what happens is we're looking at the, the preferences for your application. And we are getting the volume. If the volume does not exist, then we're setting it to 50. So we're either going to be getting whatever the volume is, or we're going to be getting 50. So if it's not equal to 50, then we're going to return true and plug true into the set volume function. Otherwise, we're going to be plugging in false. So let's go ahead, back into our start, we're going to go ahead and set a default. So set volume, and we're going to say player press dot get int volume. And again, we're going to say 50 again, not equal to 50. And we're going to say false and true. So in this scenario, 
if the volume is not equal to 50, then the volume is false, otherwise it's true. And we're going to go into further detail on this uh, in the next function that we're going to make. So let's go ahead and create that set volume function. All right. So if is on, we're going to say sprite render dot sprite equals volume on. And then we're also going to change the, the actual volume. I know I know we said that we weren't going to worry about that. But we're, we're technically not changing it. What we're doing is we're just setting the preference for the volume. It's up to you whether or not you want to actually adjust the volume. We're just setting a preference for it. So we're not, we're not truly changing the volume. Player press dot set int. We're saying volume equals 50. And then we're going to say else. Sprite render dot sprite equals volume off. And again, we're going to say player press dot set int volume, and we're going to set that to zero. So what's happening here is if the volume, if we're saying the volume is on, uh, based on our what we pass in, then we're going to change the sprite to the on sprite, uh, the on graphic, I'm going to set the volume to 50. Otherwise, we're going to change it to the off graphic, which I'm fixing now, and I'm going to set the volume to zero. So that way, every time this, these checks happen, um, they, they add up. So in this case, uh, if it's 50, um, if it's not 50, then it's true, and we're going to be setting the volume on. If it is 50, then we want to turn the volume off and set it to false. So it's kind of inverted. It could be a little hard to wrap your head around at first, but it's really not that bad. So let's go ahead and save that. And let's go ahead back into our, into our app here. And let's go ahead and see what happens when we run it. So there are errors. So the sprite render does not exist in the current context. And that's on line 11. Yeah, so I misspelled it. So I'm adding an ER, and it should be a lot better now. So hitting play. And you can see that we have an on volume. So let's go ahead and click it. And you can see that it turned it off. So on, off, on, off. And you can tell that my actual graphic that I made is not completely aligned, but that's all right. You get the, you get the idea. So let's go ahead and stop it. And we're going to go ahead and build it on our Android device, which I have a simulator um, up and running here. It's, you know what, it's actually going to give me an error because I didn't set the build identifiers yet. So let's go ahead and try that again. All right, going back into our simulator here, you can see that's loaded, and we can toggle it with the touch events, just like that. So it's it's pretty convenient, and just like that, you have your own your very own toggle.